Now let's look at consumer willingness. And this is their willingness to spend. Again, we're going to look at the inverse demand function. And we're going to put a little curve on it just to get it a little to be easier to work with. Okay. And still, this is Q, and the output is P. Now, let's say here we have 5 units and here 15 units. And somewhere in the middle we have about 10 units. This is a input of a Q, Q quantity. If I put a rectangle right here, this the area of that rectangle aptly uh, it represents two things. The width of it is a delta Q, which is one unit. The height gives us how much was paid at the time we had ten units out there and we sold that one. Then we can back up a little bit. Let's say when we had nine units out. Nine units, we have another delta, delta Q, that's one unit, and we got paid for that. So we get money so for that, for that amount. And let's say we keep finding these rectangles until we go all the way back to zero. This area is all the money that we would have collected as we marched from from zero products out to ten products. We got money here, we got we got money here, here and here. So we're adding up all the monies. This is what the consumer was willing to spend from the time we had zero products out to the time that we have ten products out. We'll generically call that Q. Well, therefore since we're finding the area under the curve the consumer willingness to spend would be represented by the integral from zero to that Q right there of the function P with respect to Q. And this will give us all the money that the consumers were willing to spend during this time between zero to Q. Next, let's look at consumer expenditure. When we look at consumer expenditure, we're looking at how much right now is the consumer spending on our product. Let's take a look at that. Q for the demand and P for the price. And once again we'll develop the um, curve. And so here at 10, let's say we have 10 units out there right now. Q units, 10. Well, currently they're paying this price right here. Well not only um, are the current consumers spending this, but the ones that could have spent more, they're also spending the same amount of money as the ones here. So everybody back here who could have paid all that are now paying this much right now. So they're paying much less. That's like the, the, um, the re record companies. They could have bought it at 500 but now that the CD players are much less, they'll buy it now at 50, even though they can afford more. So right now, our expenditure, or what we're getting, is this area right here, the area of that rectangle. This represents consumer expenditure. And 
that'll simply be a matter of multiplying this Q times whatever P or price that's matched up over here. So this will be Q times P. And that's complete. Now, let's look at consumer surplus. Okay, once again, we know the input is Q products and the output will be price. And here's our graph right here. Okay. Well, here again is where the consumer is. Let's say at 10, which is we'll call Q. We know that the entire graph from here to here represents all the uh, willingness to spend that's all the money that's actually out there ready to be spent on this product and we know currently how much money is being spent it's this portion right here which is this right here so the difference between all the money that the um, customer has to spend and how much they're currently is spending is the difference is found in this area right here that represents the surplus of money that's still out there that can be um, gained because the um, big buyers are buying for such less they still have these monies dedicated or available for um, purchase so this is a market of money that you can actually go after what we call this is consumer surplus and this is found by taking the complete area from this equation here 0 to Q P and Q DQ minus this smaller area right here Q times P consumer surplus